The Nag Hammadi Library, Elogians, translated by John D. Turner and Orville S. Wintermute, and read by Ottawa Clasher. There are many, many lines missing from this text. I will indicate to you how many lines are missing when needed. Five lines missing. Since they are perfect individuals and dwell all together, joined with the mind, the guardian which I provided, who taught you, and it is the power that exists within you that often extended itself as word from the tripled powered one, that one of all those who truly exist with the immeasurable one, the eternal light of the knowledge that appeared, the male virginal youth, the first of the aeons, from a unique triple powered aeon, the triple powered one, who truly exists, for when he was still, was extended and when he was extended, he became complete and he received power from all of them. He knows himself and the perfect invisible spirit. And he came to be in an aeon who knows that she knows that one. And she became Calyptos, who acted in those whom she knows. He is a perfect, invisible, noetic, protofathnius, harmadin, and empowering the individuals. She is a triple male and being individually, five lines missing, individual on the one hand they are together on the other hand since she is in existence of theirs and she sees them all also truly she contains the divine autogenes when she knew her existence and when she stood she brought this one since he saw them all existing individually as he is and when they became as he is they shall see the divine triple male the power that is higher than God. He is the thought of all these who exist together. If he ponders them, he ponders the great male, noetic, protophanes, the procession of these. When he sees it, he sees also those who truly exist and the procession of those who are together. And when he has seen these, he has seen the calyptos. And if he sees the one, and if he sees one of the hidden ones, he sees the aeon of Barbello. And as for the unbegotten offspring of that one, if one sees how he lives, four lines missing, you have heard about the abundance of each one of them certain. But concerning the invisible, spiritual, triple-powered one, here, he exists as an invisible one who is incomprehensible to them all. He contains them all within himself, for they all exist because of him. He is perfect and is greater than perfect, and he is blessed. He is always one, and he exists in them all. Being ineffable, unnameable, being one who exists through them all, he whom should one discern him? One would not desire anything that exists before him among those that possess existence. For he is the source from which they all were emitted. He is prior to perfection. He was prior to every divinity, and he is prior to every blessedness. Since he provides for every power, and he is a non-substantial substance, since he is a god, over whom there is no divinity, the transcending of those greatness and beauty. Five lines missing. Power. It is not impossible for them to receive a revelation of these things. If they come together, since it is not impossible for the individuals to comprehend the universal one, situated in the place that is higher than perfect, they apprehend by means of a first thought, not as being alone, but it is along with the latency of existence that he confers being. He provides everything for himself, since it is he who shall come to be when he recognizes himself. And he is one who subsists as a cause of source of being, and an immaterial material, and an innumerable number, and a formless form, and a shapeless shape, and a powerlessness, and a power, and an insubstantial substance, and a motionless motion, and an inactivity, activity. Yet he is a provider of provisions and a divinity of divinity. But whenever they apprehend, they participate the first vitality and an undivided activity, a hypostasis, 
of the first one from the one who truly exists, and a second activity, however, is the he is endowed with blessedness and goodness because when he is recognized as the traverser of the boundlessness of the invisible spirit that subsists in him it boundlessness turns him to it the invisible spirit in order that it might know what is within him and how he exists and he was becoming salvation for every one by being a point of departure for those who truly exists for through him his knowledge endured since he is the one who knows what he is. But they brought forth nothing beyond themselves, neither power, nor rank, nor glory, nor aeon, for they are all eternal. He is a vitality and a mentality, and that which is, and that which is constantly, possesses its vitality and mentality, and life has vitality, possesses non-being and mentality. Mentality possesses life, and that which is, and the three are one, although individually they are three. Now, after I heard these things, my son, Mezos, I was afraid, and I turned toward the multitude. Thought gives power to those who are capable of knowing these things by a revelation that is much greater. And I was capable, although flesh was upon me, I heard from you about these things, and about the doctrine that is in them. Since the thought which is in me distinguished the things that are beyond measure as well as the unknowables, therefore I fear that my doctrine may have become something beyond what is fitting. And then my son Mezos, the all-glorious one, Uel, spoke to me again. She made a revelation to me and said, No one is able to hear these things, except the great powers alone. O oh, Alogenes, a great power was put upon you, which the Father of the All, the Eternal, put upon you before you came to this place, in order that those things that are difficult to distinguish you might distinguish, and those things that are unknown to the multitude you might know, and that you might escape in safety to the one who is yours, who was first to save, and who does not need to be saved. Five lines missing. To you a form and a revelation of the invisible, spiritual, triple-powered one, outside of which dwells an undivided, incorporeal, eternal knowledge. As with all the aeons, the Aeon of Barbello exists, also endowed with the types and forms of those who truly exist. The image of Calyptos, and endowed with the intellectual word of these, he bears the noctic male protophanes, like an image, and he acts within the individuals, either with craft, or with skill, or with partial instinct. He is endowed with the divine autogenes, like an image, and he knows each one one of these he acts separately and individually continuing to rectify the failures from nature he is endowed with the divine triple male as salvation for them all in cooperation with the invisible spirit he is a word from a council he is the perfect youth and this hypostasis is a six lines missing my soul went slack and I fled, and I was very disturbed. And I turned to myself, and I saw the light that surrounded me, and the good that was in me. I became divine. And the all-glorious one, Uel, anointed me again, and she gave power to me. She said, Since your instruction has become complete, and you have known the good that is within you, here concerning the triple-powered one, those things that you will guard in great silence and great mystery because they are not spoken to anyone, except those who are worthy, those who are able to hear, nor is it fitting to speak to an uninstructed generation concerning the universal one, that is higher than perfect. But you have these, because of the triple-powered one, the one who exists in blessedness and goodness, the one who is responsible for all these. There exists within him much greatness, inasmuch as he is one in a five lines missing 
Of the first thought, which does not fall away from those who dwell in comprehension and knowledge and understanding, and that one moved motionlessly in that which governs, lest he sink into the boundless by means of another activity of mentality. And he entered into himself and he appeared, being all-encompassing, the universal one that is higher than perfect. Indeed, it is not through me that he is to such a degree anterior to knowledge, whereas there is no possibility for complete comprehension. He is nevertheless known. And this is so because of the third silence of mentality and the second undivided activity which appeared in the first thought, that is, the aeon of Barbello, together with, with the indivisible one of the divisible likeness and the triple-powered one and the non-substantial existence, then the power appeared by means of an activity that is at rest and silent. Although it uttered a sound, thus, za, za, za. But when the UL heard the power and she was filled, five lines missing, thou art solemnus, according to the vitality that is thine, and the first activity which derives from divinity, Thou art great, Armedon. Though thou art perfect, Epiphanus, and according to that activity of thine, the second power and the mentality which derives from blessedness, Ottoer, Beruthius, Eregenior, Orominius, Aramin, Aphileges, Elufius, Lalamus, Yethus, Nothus, thou art great. He who knows thee knows the universal one. Thou art one, thou art one. He who is good, apprehendin. Thou art the aeon of the aeons. He who is perpetually. Then she praised the universal one, saying, Lelamius, Notheus, Seneon, Essene, Us, Riphanios, Melifunus, Elmauni, Smoon, Optone. He who is, thou art he who is the aeon of aeons, the unbegotten who art higher than the unbegotten ones. Yatomenos, thou alone for whom all the unborn ones were begotten, the unnameable one. Ten lines missing. Knowledge. Now, after I heard these things, I saw the glorious of the perfect individuals and the all-perfect ones who exist together and the all-perfect ones who are before the perfect ones. Again, the greatly glorious one, Yuel, said to me, O Elogians, in an unknowing knowledge, you know that the triple-powered one exists before the glories. They do not exist among those who exist. They do not exist together with those who exist, nor those who truly exist. Rather, all these exist as divinity and blessedness. And existence, and as a non substantiality and non being existence. And then I prayed that the revelation might occur to me. And then the all glorious one, Uel, said to me, O oh, Elogians, of course the triple male is something beyond substance. Yet were he insubstantial, nine lines missing. Those who exist in association with the generation of those who truly exist. The self-begotten ones exist with the triple male. If you seek with a perfect seeking, then you shall know the good that is in you. Then you will know yourself as well, as one who derives from the God who truly pre-exists. For after a hundred years, there shall come to you a revelation of that one by means of Salamex and Semen and the luminaries of the Aeon of Barbello, and that beyond what is fitting for you you shall not know at first, so as not to forfeit your kind. And if so, then when you receive a conception of that one, then you are filled with the word to completion. Then you become divine, and you become perfect. You receive them. Four lines missing. The seeking. The existence. If it ha apprehends anything, it is apprehended by that one and by the very one who is comprehended and then he becomes greater who comprehends and knows than he who is comprehended and known. But if he descends to his nature, he is less, for the incorporeal natures have not associated with any magnitude having this power. They are everywhere and they are nowhere. 
since they are greater than every magnitude and less than every exegity. Now, after the all-glorious one, Uel said these things. She separated from me and left me, but I did not despair of the words that I heard. I prepared myself therein, and I deliberated with myself for a hundred years, and rejoiced exceedingly, since I was in a great light and a blessed path, because those whom I was worthy to see, as well as those whom I was worthy to hear, are those whom it is fitting that the great powers alone, five lines missing, of God. When the completion of the one hundred years drew nigh, it brought me a blessedness of the eternal hope, full of auspiciousness. I saw the good divine autogenes and the Savior who is the youthful, perfect, triple male child, and his goodness, the noetic perfection, protophanus harmedon, and the blessedness of the calyptos, and the primary origin of the blessedness, the aeon of Barbello, full of divinity, and the primary origin of the one without origin, the spiritual, invisible, triple-powered one, the universal one that is higher than perfect. When I was taken by the eternal light out of the garment that was upon me, and taken up to a holy place with likeness cannot be revealed in the world. Then, by means of a great blessedness, I saw all those about whom I had heard, and I praised all of them, and I stood upon my knowledge, and I inclined to the knowledge of the universals, the aeon of Barbello, and I saw holy powers by means of the luminaries of the virginal male Barbello, telling me that I would be able to test what happens in the world. O oh, Elogians! Behold your blessedness, how it silently abides, by which you know your proper self, and seeking yourself, withdraw to the vitality that you will see moving, and although it is impossible for you to stand, fear nothing. But if you wish to stand, withdraw to the existence, and you will find it standing and at rest, after the likeness of the one who is truly at rest, and who embraces all these silently and inactively. And when you receive a revelation of him by means of a primary revelation of the unknown one, the one whom, if you should know him, be ignorant of him, and you become afraid in that place, withdraw to the rear because of the activity. And when you become perfect in that place, still yourself, and in accordance with the pattern that indwells you, know likewise that it is this way in all such matters after this pattern, and do not further dissipate, so that you may be able to stand, and do not desire to be active, lest you fall in any way from the inactivity in you of the unknown one. Do not know him, for it is impossible, but if by any means of an enlightened thought you should know him, be ignorant of him. Now I was listening to these things as those ones spoke them. There was within me a stillness of silence, and I heard the blessedness whereby I knew my proper self. And I withdrew to the vitality as I sought myself, and I joined into it, and I stood, not firmly, but silently, and I saw an eternal intellectual, undivided motion that pertains to all the formless power, which is unlimited by limitation. And when I wanted to stand firmly, I withdrew the existence, which I found standing and at rest, like an image and likeness of what is conferred upon me by a revelation of the Invisible One, and the One who is at rest. I was filled with revelation by means of a primary revelation of the Unknowable One, as though I were ignorant of Him. I knew Him, and I received power by Him, having been permanently strengthened I knew the one who exists in me, and the triple-powered one, and the revelation of his uncontainableness, and by means of a primary revelation of the first one, unknowable to them all. The God who is beyond perfection, I saw him, and the triple-powered one, and exists in them all. I was seeking the ineffable and unknowable God, whom, if one should know him, he would be absolutely ignorant of him the mediator of the triple-powered one, who subsists in stillness and silence, and is unknowable. And when I was confirmed in these matters, the powers of the luminaries said to me, Cease hindering the inactivity that exists in you. 
by seeking incomprehensible matters, rather hear about him in so far as it is possible by means of a primary revelation and a revelation. Now, he is something in so far as he exists in that he either exists and will become or acts or knows. Although he lives without mind or life or existence or non-existence, incomprehensibly, and he is something along with his proper being, he is not left over in some way, as if he yields something that is assayed or purified, or that receives or gives, and he is not diminished in any way, whether by his own desire or whether he gives or receives through another. Neither does he have any desire of himself, nor from another. It does not affect him. Rather, neither does he give anything by himself, lest he become diminished in another respect. Nor for this reason does he need mind or life, is indeed anything at all. He is superior to the universals in his privation and unknowability, that is, the non-being existence, since he is endowed with silence and stillness, lest he be diminished by those who are not diminished. He is neither divinity nor blessedness, nor perfection, rather it, this triad, is an unknowable entity of him and that which is proper to him. Rather, he is another one superior to the blessedness and the divinity and perfection. For he is not perfect, but he is another thing that is superior. He is neither boundless, nor is he bounded by another. Rather, he is something superior. He is not corporeal. He is not incorporeal. He is not great. He is not small. He is not a number. He is not a creature. Nor is he something that exists. That one can know. But he is something else of himself that is superior, which one cannot know. He is primary revelation and knowledge of himself, as it is he alone who knows himself, since he is not one of those that exists, but is another thing. He is superior to superlatives, even in comparison to what is his and not his. He neither participates in age, nor does he participate in time. He does not receive anything from anything else. He is not diminishable, neither does he diminish anything, nor is he undiminishable, but he is self-comprehending, as something so unknowable that he exceeds those who excel in unknowability. He is endowed with blessedness and perfection and silence, not the blessedness nor the perfection and stillness, rather it these attributes is an entity of him that exists one which one cannot know and which is at rest rather they are entities of him unknowable to them all and he is much lighter in beauty than all those that are good and he is thus unknowable to all of them in every aspect and through them all he is in them all not only as the unknowable knowledge that is proper to him and he is united with the ignorance that sees him whether one sees in what way he is unknowable, or sees him as he is in every aspect, or sees him as he is in every respect, or would say that he is something like knowledge. He has sinned against him, being liable to judgment because he did not know God. He will not be judged by that one who is neither concerned for anything nor has any desire, but it judgment is from himself because he did not find the origin that truly exists. He is blind, apart from the eye of revelation that is at rest. The one that is activated, the one from the triple power of the first thought of the invisible spirit, this one thus exists from 15 lines missing, something set firmly on the a beauty and a first emergence of stillness and silence and tranquility an unfathomable greatness. When he appeared, he did not need time, nor did he... When he appeared, he did not need time, nor did he partake of eternity. Rather, of himself, he is unfathomably unfathomable. He does not activate himself so as to become still. He is not in existence, lest he be in want. Spatially, he is corporeal, while properly, he is or incorporeal. He has non-being existence. He exists for all of them unto himself without any desire. But he is a great summit of greatness, and he is higher than his stillness, 
in order that 15 lines missing. He saw them and empowered them all, although they did not concern themselves with that one at all, nor if one should receive from him does he receive power. Nothing activates him in accordance with the unity that is at rest. For he is unknowable. He is an airless place of boundlessness, since he is boundless and powerless and non-existent. He was not given being, rather he contains all of these in himself, being at rest and standing out of the one who stands continually. Since there had appeared an eternal life, the invisible and triple-powered spirit, which is in all of these who exist, and it surrounds them all, being higher than them all, a shadow. 15 lines missing. He was filled with power and he stood before them, empowering them all, and he filled them all. And concerning all of these things you have heard, certainly, and do not seek anything more, but go. We do not know whether the unknowable one has angels or gods, or whether the one who is at rest was containing anything within himself except the stillness, which is he, lest he be diminished. It is not fitting to spend more time seeking. It was appropriate that yous know and that they speak with another one, but you will receive them. Five lines missing. And he said to me, Write down the things that I shall tell you, and of which I shall remind you, for the sake of those who will be worthy after you. And you will leave this book upon a mountain, and you will adjure the guardian. Come, dreadful one. And after he said these things, he separated from me. But I was full of joy, and I wrote this book, which was appointed for me, my son, Mezos in order that I might disclose to you the things that were proclaimed before me in my presence. And at first I received them in great silence, and I stood by myself preparing myself. These are the things that were disclosed to me. O oh, my son Messos, thirteen lines missing. Proclaim them, O oh, my son Messos, as the seal for all the books of Elogians. The End of Elogians